morning, it's February 20th, second month, 20th day, 2021. Welcome to uh, Yoga for Big Spirits. Um, today we are moving into the energy of yoga and I will speak what I'm hearing so that wherever you are, okay, I'm kicking off my slippers, bare feet. So wherever you are and however this time comes that we are together, it's moving into the field, moving into the place where we can wait for the energy of yoga to come, right? So we're gonna start witnessing these miracles and this is a miracle in that itself you receive now the awareness that there is a spirit of yoga, that that energy of yoga can come in. So we clear our field. We clear our field as best as we can to receive the energy of yoga. So after I have my fruit, I want to start immediately sharing with you the thought process. So I clear my mind and then I listen for the words that come and say them, okay? All right, I'm hearing the first thought that I had <clears throat> when I was getting a glass of water just before the class. I was standing in the kitchen and I noticed as I was standing there, I, I was getting water and then I just relaxed my body, my body went like that. So what's that telling me about my body? My body's saying, <clears throat> I'm not centered. I'm over here. I'm on my left. I'm over to the left. I'm over to the left. So coming into your stance with your feet, hip width, feet on the floor, hip width, right? And you're coming into your body and just feel for you where your body is. You might be over here, you might be here, you could be like that. However you find your body, when you relax, look to the shoulders, relax, let it go. So my body's going, this is where, this is where I am. So that tells us what? That our spine's out of alignment. Because if we were in alignment, this is how we would stand. So if I relax, my body is going, okay, no, well, I'm not standing like that. This is a, a, um, <clears throat> an indication that your body is out of alignment. You're, you're not centered. So you're going to go into your day and whatever decision you make or whatever happens for you, you're making it from a position where you're uncentered. So if the body's uncentered, when we are body, mind, and spirit, we're not in one. We're not in the one. We're not in one accord. We're not in alignment. Okay, so rotating, looking behind. We're going to now move into that part where um, we allow spirit to begin to come in and move the body. So we've had the recognition of where we are at this time, what our body's doing, and that we're out of alignment. So our re request to the universe is thank you for moving me into alignment. So at the end of my class, I will be in balance. I will be in alignment. So our intention today is move into alignment. And when you come into alignment, your body will take you into that alignment. So I'm going to... Um, set the intention that whatever the majority of people are uh, needing to, to learn at this time, may it come through me. Um, so this idea of maintaining the body and moving into balance in order to um, move into the field, move into the uh, place where you are receptive to what is. 
Okay, look, so now I'm just doing that. I'm doing a rocking. My body's moved into, um, it, it knows how to center. Your body does it automatically. You don't need the mind to tell the body um, how to get into alignment. The body moves into it. So now we're, we're going to watch as we go through our class this morning how the body naturally moves into alignment. So bring that into your awareness that this is what we're going to witness today. And it hasn't happened yet because as we know, I'm over here. All right, I'm relaxed, I'm over here. All right, so by allowing the body to move and shift, I mean, you can do this, you can have music on or something when you're watching this, if that's a, a help for you. So where are we going now? Okay, so now we're moving into our figure eight. I'm really pleased to see this pattern come forward because it's an affirmation. We're eternal. So, so depending on what it is you're hearing in the field, how amazing that Sandra uh, is drawing a figure eight, the sign of eternity. What is she identifying? What is she saying? Why is, why is her body making this the first message that we receive about her? And that this message, message continues to flow every week since we started making videos together. So I'm hearing uh, well, what flows through me, what comes into the field, okay? Why would someone immediately start a program and then draw the figure eight? Would it be something that we all recognize? With the sign of eternity in that figure eight, that mark that's left throughout history for us, it's pretty much on all pyramid walls and cal mind calendars and everywhere, is this mark, this mark of eternity. This mark of eternity identifies myself as a sign that I'm eternal. I have the knowing that I am an eternal being and no, I've always been here, I always will be. Right? I, I've always been here and I always will be. Okay? So this recognition, it's like, you know, um, on Star Trek, right? And then they had the Vulcan sign, which I think it's, uh, you know, not a Star Trekker, apologize. Wannabe, though. That was the right answer, right, guys? Wannabe. All right, so that recognition <clears throat> of, uh, it's an identification sign saying, you'll know me because I'm eternal. So anybody watching my videos are going to start to understand, oh, wait, if you're an eternal being, and oh, look at us going to the eternity sign again. That was great. So if you're an eternal being, you're going to find this yoga, this channel, appealing to you, okay? If you're in the recognition that you're an eternal being, you'll want to want to watch because and move along with me because you'll recognize, you know, like I'm the yoga teacher that's here, that's come forward, and I'm going to teach you how to open your body, clear your channels, Move into the field where we're receptive to listen to the Word of God. So if this is what your uh, journey entails, is this is what you're seeking after, is a, is a language, is a way to move into our higher dimension and then take the physical body with us. I want to take my physical body with, with me up into the fifth dimension. In other words, the body that I have, bring it into alignment because it is here for now. And if now is when we are moving into that state of awareness of being eternal beings, then the body that we have right now is perfect for that. Well, I'm letting that hang, okay? Side to side, big figure eights, big hoops figure eights. So <clears throat> what if you couldn't go any farther in the field unless you moved into the acceptance that however you are right now standing there watching this or sitting there watching this, that your body's perfect for where you are to move into the awareness <clears throat> of being an internal being. And once you move into the awareness of being an internal being, what does that entail? What does that 
what are, what's expected of you. What's expected of you when you move into the awareness that you're an eternal being and have the understanding of it, and you really get it. You go, well, what does that mean that I'm eternal? It means you come and go, but for the time you're here, you're coming down here to make a contribution to God's creation. Okay, so my, I'm, uh, my knees are coming up at the side, lifting high. <clears throat> going back into that, just going, see, it's the moment I tried to describe to you what I was doing, I had to go back in the other side of my brain, and it was just like, uh, how do I explain this? <laughs> it's just like, keep going, okay, knees high, side to side. <clears throat> being in that eternal, what's expected of you, being in the field, being that eternal being, what's expected of you? Okay, I'm going big eternal, big eights, but we're rocking side and side with the hips. Straight legs, coming over to the right, over to the left, to the right, over to the left. What's expected of you when you have the awareness that you're an eternal being? Come back in your stance. All right, so I'm, it's like I'm straightening my back, I want to stretch my low back. Hmm. That was bad. Making that sign can get some water. Actually, it's today. It's telling you it's not just water. It's uh, chlorophyll. I put chlorophyll in my water. It's just extra hydrating for now. Seem to need it. <laughs> I seem to recognize that I need it. I've been given a given a nudge by the universe. Drink your chlorophyll. <laughs> you just have to listen. Okay, we're talking about being eternal beings and the sign of eternity. I mean, that's the, you know, the sign we give when we recognize, I'm an eternal being too. I've got that awareness. It doesn't matter where you live in the world, right? We can communicate now. And the sign is the sign of eternity. Recognition that I'm an eternal being. And I know it. And now that I've awakened to my, that I'm an eternal being, it's like, oh wait, now's the time for the mission. Wake up everybody. Do what it is you're meant to do now. Like it's a go, go, go. All systems go. Bridget Jones going down the fire pole. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. <laughs> it's like, yeah, go. <laughs> so being what you are. Now, being an eternal being, there's only one thing that you are in the field. And the only thing you are in the field is love. That's the only thing you can be when you are an eternal being, is be in the field of love. Now, if you're not in that field of love, I would suggest or invite you to think about maybe I'm not fully in the awareness that I am an eternal being. Maybe I haven't woken up to the fact that I'm an eternal being. Oh, so that's what you're waking up to. Just hit those roses. Yes. Yes, I'm waking up to that I'm an eternal being. I think a lot of people are misconstruing this and thinking, oh, I have to wake up to what it is that's happening in the 3D world. And people who are awakened, who are eternal, are doing their best to waken up the masses. And I'm getting a kick out of that because it's message isn't for the masses, the message is for you. The message is for them. This is a message for the eternal beings. This message that's coming through today is for all the eternal beings. Do you get that? So this is our connection. This is our channel that we can come together and connect on. In other words, when we want to tap in together and give each other courage, uh, encouragement stuff, when we want to hear from our source, when we want to hear from our source, we will um, learn how to do that and not mistake it and not be confused and not be 
um, thinking, well, I don't know whether to believe that or not. I don't know what's true or not. Yeah, you do. You do so. Light being snow. Just tap in. Tap in. Meaning, awaken yourself. Not worrying about others. Awaken yourself. When you're at the point where you can go, I'm in the, I'm in the awareness, I'm an eternal being. I'm in the awareness that, oh, wait a minute, now's the time to shine. Now's the time for me to be loved. Chances are, you're not in a full-time job or heavily employed right now if you really are an eternal being because you're, uh, you've arranged with the universe not to be doing very much right now. So you could lie down and have a nap, take care of yourself, do nothing but as much as you can but meditate, do some yoga, have some fun, dance, laugh. Lifting vibrational frequencies. When you are doing that on a daily basis, you are in recognition. Wait a minute, I'm an eternal being, and I have, I, I'm have. i not going to caught up in the illusion. I'm going to go straight to work, and straight to work means, hey, I'm going to be happy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what brings me joy. I'm going to paint, I'm going to write, I'm going to create, right? I'm going to learn spirituality, I'm going to do yoga. I want to go on this journey. I want to awaken. I want to be one of those light beings that's sitting at home and meditating every day because I can. I want to be one of those light beings that's happy. Happy because despite what's going on, I'm still feeding my mind and my soul with great people like, I'm going to say uh, Dr. David Hawkins, Power Versus Force. I'm starting to watch him. Boy, that's feeding my soul. It, uh, watching him is validation. Watching him is validation of uh, being able to put into words what's happening, scientific language of understanding what's, what transpires when we move into eternity. Uh, and and, and his, his description is accurate. For me, I identify it with, with it. And what he said yesterday was what I watched, uh, I think it was What is God, it was brilliant. And it, and it had to do with being when you when you are the field of receptivity, when you are moving into um, that place which is witness and observation, and once you are in that place of witness and observation, you become aware. <laughs> sorry to of the unformed. Because the unformed does not exist, but you being love, you being happy, you in the state of being peaceful, you bring that unformed mass energy forward by your being. So you draw what you're being. So this mass will create for you what, how it is you're being. So you can't make this up. You can't pretend. You can't be a poser. It has to be real. It has to be a real thing where you really are feeling love. You really can elevate your body, uh, mind, and spirit up to love. And in that loving field, that's where God creates. All right? That's where God creates. And um, that's what I learned yesterday was... Um, that we ourselves can do nothing. We are not the creators. God is the creators. But what we are is the witness to the field in the, uh, the witness to the field. I've heard that a lot. But we are to watch. We're just to watch God and see what he does. Having that awareness that, oh, wait, it's not me that's going to do this. It's God. It gives you the stance of, I'm a, I'm a watcher. I'm watching what's going to happen without controlling. I'm just going to watch what's going to happen. So that which is unformed is within us. In other words, we already carry around with, with inside of ourselves that which we are, and we are in the unraveling of the knowing of who we are. And as we take this journey deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole into understanding who we are, um, it becomes what, what do you discover at the end of the of the end of the journey. What, what is it that you're seeking? What do you, 
what do you want to know? For me, it was to find out that I was the daughter of God. I wanted to know. Um, I wanted to know what it would be like to be on the earth and be God's daughter. Like, how would you live if you were? How would you live your life if you were God's daughter? And how would you know it to be true? I'm hearing miracles. I've had miracles happen in my life. I've had incredible miracles happen in my life. And there's been no other miracles that I've ever heard of happening in anybody else's life that have happened in mine. Yes, I've heard other people who have been visited by an angel. Yes, there's others that make that claim, and I have too. But I didn't know it at the time I had to evolve and search. And, well, no, it was more, it was more of awareness that God gave me as a gift. He just, you know you were visited by an angel, don't you? And I went, no, I didn't know that. It was when you were little and you were four and a half. You, you know, I sent one of my angels. Do you remember what that... Do you remember how that felt? And in my higher knowing, I was only four and a half, but I remember that, how that felt when that angel came on me. I'll never forget it. You can't forget it when an angel visits you. You just don't. And one of God's angels, and I, it was Gabriel. And I'll never forget the stillness that it came out of, the vacuum or the void that existed before the appearance of the angel. In other words, where I was, I had the awareness at four and a half that everything became still and nothing was moving. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine as a four and a half year old walking down the street early in the morning all by yourself, 7.30 on a Sunday morning, the whole street's asleep, and you, in your infant wisdom, get the idea you should go for a walk. So up I go, four and a half, go for a walk along the street. And I was just, I remember because I was just teaching myself how to get dressed. So I had to remember, oh yeah, I have to put on my sweater, my, you know, my little top and my, my undershirt, you know. I'm mentally telling myself how to get dressed because I'm just learning to do it for myself. So I get myself outside and I said, you know, I don't know everybody on the street. So I'm going to go for a walk, but I'm only going to go as far as I know who lives in the houses. So... I start heading down the street, and I'm walking down the street, and I'm going, I know this person, I know this person, I know this person. And I got about five houses up, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I don't know who lives past this person. So I turn around, smart little girl, turn around. I'm walking down the street, running in and out of the ditches, and I'm looking at the grass going, oh, it's spring. It was at springtime, because the grass was kind of brown and matted. And it was cool, and I was angry with myself that I didn't, put a jacket on and then um, I come up on this on the road and I look ahead of me and then I realized there was no sound there was no movement there was nothing but everything had gone quiet but it was more than that it was like everything was sucked out it became a vacuum itself so the a vacuum was created and as this vacuum was created, and I'm walking along, this um, voice speaks and says, you know, you're not alone, don't you? And it was like this warmth came with it. It was like wings came down and wrapped themselves around me. And it was like someone whispering, telling me over my right shoulder, you know, you're not alone, don't you? Like your higher self, an angelic being, was coming down and telling me I'm not alone. Why was that the most important thing for me to know? Okay? Why was that? Why would God send a message to me at such a young age? I was I was his daughter. I think the first thing he wanted to do was comfort me, and I think the first thing Father wanted to say to me is, hey, I just want you to know you're not alone. 
But I, I have to be honest, if I, if I can be honest, I think, I think at that time was the time I died. I think I, I truly believe in this lifetime I died at four and a half. Uh, I, I was tortured to death. <laughs> and then it was like, I remember it happening and I remember it was like someone, all I remember doing was praying I wanted to die and then a plug, it's like someone pulled a plug out and I went black. So if I, if that soul was born and exists, existed in me and left, so that God's daughter could come in and have this body in this form in this time. How would God let me know that I was his daughter? Well, first thing he did was send to the angel. Yeah. Okay. So we were talking about moving into the knowing of who you are. It becomes, you're given all these clues along your path of who you are, and you just have to wake up to it. You just have to let it be okay what you're hearing. So all the miracles that are happening to you and have happened to me, uh, because I have no reference point, because I'm, I have no, um, no one to compare my journey with, um, these miracles that I have experienced have basically gone unspoken. They've basically been gone unspoken, these miracles that I've actually happened. And as we go on, when you start hearing some of the miracles that have happened to me, I've tried to do my best um, leaving a trail of development on my YouTube uh, channel, my YouTube videos. And I've tried my best, like, like, you know, leaving those little breadcrumbs of, along the way of if you ever want to figure it out, right? If you ever want to figure it out, my journey of how I'm figuring it out, how I have to come to terms in my mind that, hey, that was a kind of a special thing. I guess I should pay attention to it because my natural tendency is to discount it. Oh, that was nothing. That was nothing. Oh, God. oh yeah, God did this and that. Yeah, oh, yeah, but these things happen to me all the time. So I, I'm tending to look at some of these incredible miracles and, and downplaying them. I'm not seeing the importance of them. Well, it's because nobody's come up, knocked on my door and said, hey, if this has ever happened to you, ding, 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 then, um, you know, that was a miracle. You should be aware of that. No one, no one came to my door and, and did that. The only person that came to my door, well, I've had many angels come to my door. But the one person that came to my door and knocked on the door and basically had a badge on that said, the official hope of the world. And um, that badge was pretty wild. That, that sign she came to show me on my doorstep was pretty wild. But how could that be a puzzle piece for me? How could that be a, of such importance in an event that I would hang on to it and it would register in my consciousness and come forward and come up at this time. Probably because I'm gonna maybe start sharing some of the miracles that have happened to me. I mean, it really would be source, God, allowing myself to share them and you to hear them. So it's that vibrational equivalent that pulls us together. In other words, it has nothing to do with appearance. It has nothing to do with that at all. It has to do with the spirit connection that exists in the field when we connect. So as I am broadcasting, bringing this to you, and you are the receiver of it, it's an identification of um, Yeah, I better tune into this channel and hear this. Not in an egotistical way, but in a way of receiving 
affirmation that we're eternal and we know it. And that's what we are to awaken to. So the great awakening, I think we're thinking it's the masses, but the great awakening is anyone who's watching this. Because you couldn't watch this or wouldn't come to it if it wasn't a message meant for you. So just by that very recognition, it would suggest to be eternal. And your job is to wake up to the eternal beings that we are and have been in, in the forms where we had the greatest impact on the planet. Remember when you were here before and you were this? Remember when you God sent you last time and you were this? And you're going, I don't remember at all who I was in a past life. Well, I don't believe in past lives. Or those are stupid. Or those have no relevance. We're, we're all one. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to say it does. There. I think it does greatly. For me, it does. I'll tell you why. It's... It's like in my highest and best good in eternity. This is some of the things I accomplished for God. No, God accomplished through me. There, there's the language again. It's the, and the awareness of, on, of myself, I can do nothing. And you have to catch yourself sometimes. The ego wants to jump in and take credit. But the truth is, is no, no, this is all God. This is all about time. So if we all agree that we would recognize one another and if we all agreed as eternal beings that God was going to talk through some of us at this time so others could hear us and awaken, there's many people that are awakening you to the truth of what's happening in 3D. And now there's people coming forward that are awakened, that they're telling you what's happening in 5D. They're saying, these are the spiritual devouts. Do, 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 do. News broadcast. No. Like I will, I, I, I would listen to Paul Butler for the longest time. And catch him, he's got some good stuff. He's in that zone. I don't know how he does it. And I was watching, uh, well, for a while I was watching Bernadette King, I believe she's got what's my animal spirit, right? That's a good person that I was watching. There's people that are coming through that are very much helping you keep in touch with what's happening on the ground, the soldiers. But we want to know what's happening in eternity, and we want to know what's our next move. What's our next move? I think our primary move right now as light beings, is um, focus on waking up yourself. Could I have been Confucius? Could I have been um, Saint Germain? Could I have been um, Mary Magdalene? Could I have been all these things? Is that Was that the greatest role I played for God? It's like star-studded cast. Yeah, yeah, this is who I am. Yeah, I, I'm no big deal. God just used me once to do this. You know, I just part of the see you know god just used me for this well yeah well god used me in a town and i was a shoemaker and you know my cousin was a iron ironsmith you know and uh we just lived in this town and this is who i was but i was i brought the great greatest peace i i calmed a community i was the spokesperson for god in that community when, they, when everyone lived in small tribal communities, that's who I was. So it, regardless, find out in yourself who you were at your highest and best and your greatest contribution. Now aspire to be that again because it's in you. It's within your field to accomplish that. God's already established that in you. Okay, so that which was, is, all right? God's already made an established um, messenger out of you. You've already been here. I'm going to drink water. You've already been here as one of God mess God's messengers before. Oh, I have? Yeah, you've already, he's already used you. And this is, you'll get inklings, you'll get signs, you'll get awarenesses of who you are.
And once you have that, don't let anybody judge it for you. Oh, I think I was this in a past life. I, I think, you know why? You know what this lady told me? It was just, were you or weren't you? Were you or weren't you? Right? Were, were you that or not? Just choose. Yes, I believe I was. Go with it. Okay, if this is my highest and best contribution. You know what? If you're wrong, it'll make itself known to you. But if you're right, just go along with it because it sets a bar for you. That's It's for your benefit to set that bar and go, oh, I was, God used me because you would have been a light at that time. So it would be, it makes sense that you would have that light in you then. So bring that awareness that what we're doing right now is just trying to awaken you. Hey, you're already a great light of God because you're eternal. You're back again. Hey, but the process is you're asleep. We have to wake you up. So once we wake you up, that you're this light being, that you're eternal, right? Once we wake you up, now you'll be in your living room, meditating, singing, doing some yoga, eating some fruit, relaxing, enjoying, and just be mellow and calm and create the peace. Create it where you are, that's your job. Create the peace, create the peace. And if you notice, I don't know, I think February's been pretty peaceful. Pretty peaceful, but there's an underlying sadness uh, as to the task at hand for many. It's an incredible sadness that's existing right now. And I can feel that. And because there's an incredible uh, sadness that's occurring, but let's let's maybe direct our attention down to um, DC and put some love, put some blanket of pink, gooey, warm love and cover everybody with the love of God. See that happening and then visualize taking your awareness down uh, and just hot, loving, warm and melting, helping Texas out too. Okay, it's two things that are happening now, two things we as light beings with the power of our thought, our collective thought, tapping into the collective consciousness can create warmth in Texas. We can do that, but it's not us doing it. We're just conscious of God doing it through us. We're conscious of God doing it through us. We'll say, use us, use our minds, use our thoughts, Lord. Give us ideas how to help. Give us ideas. What is it that we can do as light beings? Well, if, if you really understand the spiritual law, can you change another? Can you awaken someone? Or is it is really that your job? Don't get your job mixed up with God's job. God's job's there to awaken them. Yours, work on yourself, which means I'm doing yoga today. I'm resting today. I'm not going to worry about everybody else because there's ground soldiers dealing with all this stuff happening in 3D. God's got that covered. He sent, sent a lot of really great angels to handle 3D. He has. It's in good hands. It's in good hands. But that's not why we're here. Those beings who are in the awareness of that they are eternal. That's not what we're doing here. Right? That's not what we're doing here. We're here awakening ourselves to, hey, I need to emit love into the field. Oh, I'm going to emit love. I'm going to make love energy with someone. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. We got lots of fear. We need a little more love. How can we make love energy? There's a great question. How are you making love energy? Right now, today, what are you going to do to make some love energy? How are you going to create that? Well, first of all, you surrender and say, Hey, God, is this my day to create love energy? And then you choose, like, just by who I am and who am I, who am I being? Who I am and who am I being? Someday, I'm... I'm being doubtful. Someday I'm being um, sleepy. Someday I'm being quiet. Someday. So when you have the awareness of each and every day, how are you being in the moment? What's your 
being, not how you are in front of people, but how you are being on your own, by yourself. How are you at being? And do you know how you're being? Just try to bring awareness. How am I being at any moment? How am I being right now? Am I being peaceful? Am I being that energy that is peace? Am I being that energy that is caring? And when, when you are in that energy more than you are in the doubt or fear or sadness, and you're more into the awareness of the love, and that you are the instrument of that which God works through. You want to hold that vibration so it can keep happening for you. You want God to work through you because then you're going to see miracles. And the more God's with you, okay, I'm just going down a bit here. I've got a stretch right from here. Um, hands coming down and crouching forward. Now I'm going side to side on my heels. I'm going to stretch my chin forward. My low back really wants to let go. I'm just going to keep rocking, rocking, talking, adding weight to the stretch in the low back. Oh, this feels really good. Change my breathing. spark now that I'm down there. Just going side to side. Oh, and eventually if you can get your hand down to the mat, oh, lifting up the heels straight. That's a deep stretch. It feels great. Deeper, bringing the hands over to the side, trying to keep them flat on the floor. If you can't do that, do the front of the thighs. And if you can't do that, do your knees can't do that to your hips okay there's me always pulling I look at my I look at these videos laugh at myself which is good all right what am I getting here quick uh, quicks working on your tummy relax your tummy we're just gonna let ourselves like a washing machine <laughs> Bring my hands up and up. <laughs> Great sound. It's not like a monkey. <laughs> I can't help but hear. What am I? What am I uh, bringing up? What is uh, coming out? It's like a. Uh, it's like a. Woo, coming out. Coming out. Power of the goddess. It's just like this big cyclone of energy, a big cone of energy. Just came out of the top of my head. Oh, wow, that was, wow. I, was, I felt that, eh? That was best, that just, whoa. Wow, see, there's a spontaneous uh, act of, release. Wow, so what did I release? What came out? What what came out? I don't know, I'm asking. Um, hmm. Came from here. It felt powerful. I'm hearing source of the goddess. The power source of the goddess. So, <clears throat> what does that mean? What does it entail? I'm asking, what does the power source of the goddess, what's, what are we to understand from that? Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. I hear, I'm hearing that it's the source of the one. Um, it is the son and the daughter. It is the source of the son and the daughter as one. So in other words, God's Son has placed his energy and become one with me until that time in which he again returns. So this is the pattern. Christ is here. He dies. He puts himself in his twin flame feminine counterpart. And then together, he leaves, the, he leaves the physical world, goes into the field, and then their love creates and manifests his return into God's, God, God recreates him. God, it's God that creates and makes that which is unmanifest manifest. So we are in that process where God is making Christ, the Christ in me, once again manifests. So he was here, he died, placed himself in me, and then now he's going to return. And this is the manifestation that I am currently um, in co-creation with God on. So just you know, it's kind of important. And um, I'm hearing, we'll, we'll hear more about that later. We'll hear more about that later. <sighs> okay. I wanted to do yoga today. I love doing yoga. I love doing yoga. I love doing these videos. I love it. I, it's because I can be who I am. And um, it's just me and you. And you know, I've had it in me to want. I've wanted to do this for years. I've been working out and being with God and doing this stuff by myself, just with God. And having all this stuff happen and then say, oh, I've always wanted to have a camera, <laughs> you know, in my own home. And that I, then if ever I did yoga, the stuff that came through me was so phenomenal. I'm going, I just want to share it with everybody. I just want everyone to go with me uh, when I have these moments with God. I wanted to share them with you because, um, why did I want to share them? It's because the Word of God feels so good, and when it comes in, you just want to tell people about it. You just want to share that Word of God with you, with others. I did. I just wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, it's like, this is so unbelievable and so great. I want to take you with me. You know, I want to take you too. Right? So, I don't I don't have a... Here's my... my uh, oh, daughter coming through. Well, she has no idea I'm working. Okay. Oh. Here we are. Okay, well, I guess that's maybe a little t signal that we should wrap this up. So let's, t let's see how our body's doing. Let's see if we moved into balance. Feet hip width apart. Roll the shoulders back. Stand and relax. Am I swaying to the left or the right? No. Nope. I'm centered. I can turn to the right. I can turn to the left. But if I shift and go side to side and check it out, I'm in my center. So that would indicate uh, we accomplished what we set out. Well, thank you so much for coming today uh, and doing yoga with me. A lot came out. It was fun for me. A lot of awareness came through. Um, what else am I hearing? What else? Uh, I, I, I loved a lot of stuff that came through today in that class, especially the sign of eternity and how to identify ourselves with one another is that's the sign. So it's like, like that. 
you see someone and you're awake and you can feel it just go like that yeah just make the figure eight that's our little code okay you know in the, in the war before you had a v a sign a v right the victory we'll just have a, a figure eight sign you could be sitting there reading a book in a store and you see another light being you go and they'll look at you and they'll go oh yeah yeah lighten awakened light being awakened here that's our code okay <laughs> how cool is that wouldn't that be something if it catches on yeah this is just a little sign that uh, the good guys the good guys are out there us awakened people we're doing our job we're meditating we're laughing we're having fun we're being peaceful we're creating high vibrations for everyone we're the ones that are to awaken and we're doing our job and we're awakening and we're creating as much love energy as we can so we're doing our job. Thank you.